So today I'm here to talk to you all about some underhyped science fiction books that I have been reading recently. These are books that you probably haven't read and honestly probably haven't heard about in a lot of cases. And so if you're looking for something that's a little bit less obvious, something that isn't talked about on the internet all the time, hopefully you keep watching. Now this video is partially inspired by the fact that I want to talk about my participation as a judge for the science fiction self-published contest. That is a mouthful. The short acronym, which isn't that short, is SFSPC, which I always mess up. But anyway, this is a contest celebrating indie science fiction. And so these books are ones that you don't necessarily hear about unless you hear and follow reviewers that are doing this and judging this. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the top five books that have been chosen by my judging group, Team Book Invasion. And I'm gonna be talking about the ones I liked, the ones I liked a little bit less, and then talking about other books I read just for fun to round out this video. All that being said, let's get started. So first let's talk about books for the contest, beginning with Prompt Excursion by Lewis Kingston. And this follows an injured officer who wakes up, their memory's impaired, their ship is out of control, and they are just in peril and need to figure out what is gonna happen next. This one, I'll be honest, is not one that grabbed me. It really doesn't appeal to my type of reading taste in terms of my preferences for science fiction. It was very action heavy, and while it definitely has an exciting premise, and I do love memory failure in books, it just really didn't grab me the way that other ones will in this video. Not one that I personally recommended for the shortlist. Next is Era of the Forgotten by Sean Thomas. And this follows a detective who is hired by a mother to investigate the death of her son. Her son was a dropout who is addicted to this futuristic drug. And they believe originally, at least the police believe that this is the cause of a drug overdose. However, the mother believes differently and he goes to investigate. And wouldn't you know there is possibly more going on, possibly a murder. Now, I'm someone who really likes science fiction and mysteries, but despite the interesting setup or what should have been an interesting setup for me, this is another one that didn't work especially well for me, one that I did not personally recommend to go forward into the contest. Next is Down Below Beyond by T.A. Bruno. And this follows a prospector who comes across this ship in this wasteland. And of course, there is more going on when they try to take it for themselves. And of course, the story goes from there. This one I did enjoy. It was one of my more positive reviews in the group. It's a very dialogue heavy book, which is not my personal favorite kind of science fiction, especially when you're just reading it on the pages. It's just a lot of characters talking, a lot of information being dumped, for lack of a better word, onto the character. So you're getting a lot of information very quickly and characters just explaining their life story and so forth to the other characters. I didn't find it the most natural way of storytelling essentially, but in terms of a plot, it was easy to follow. It was generally pretty fun and interesting. So I like this one, but I definitely would have loved to see it a little bit more matured or polished in a way that really would have excited me a bit more. Next is Mortal Mission by Pip Skinner. And this is another science fiction mystery. In this one, we follow a science officer who is going on this mission. They are there to replace another science officer who has mysteriously died. And they go on the mission and strange things start to happen. The new science officer looks to blame and soon enough there are more casualties and there's just something not right. And so it's very much a story trying to figure out who is responsible, what is happening, and so forth. It's one that I would definitely like parts of it. I think that there's some really interesting commentary within the story. For me, this one was just a little bit more complex. I thought the characters were more nuanced. I liked the mystery of what was going on in a way that the other stories didn't necessarily grab my attention. I really did want to know what was happening. And I do think it'll appeal to a lot of us who got into science fiction, reading some of the big, buzzy, recent books like The Martian, where you kind of like that technical piece to it. So I like this one a lot. If it wasn't for the next book I'm gonna talk about, this would personally be my recommendation for the group. But the next book I'm gonna talk about was uh, just a little bit better for my personal taste. And the final book that made the shortlist for Book Invasion was Dark Theory by Wick Welker. If you follow my channel, you'll know that this is a book that you have heard about before because I have talked about it several times and you might have even read it for yourself. It was just coincidentally assigned to my group. I didn't have any involvement in that, but I was pleasantly happy to have an excuse to reread read it now that I had access to the audio for review. And I really enjoyed this one once again. This is a story that follows, at the beginning of the story, there is a robot who wakes up. They know that they have this mission or desire to find their maker, and they team up with a thief. This is a science fiction book that really follows, to me, a fantasy narrative, but in a way that I find very pleasing because it blends in still those higher, harder science fiction ideas and concepts that really appeals to the type of reader when it comes to science fiction that I am. And so I really enjoyed this one. It is a long book. It is a bigger book. It's the beginning of a series. It's ambitious. 
delicious and I really enjoyed it. This is definitely a hard book to beat and technically at the time of recording this we have not finalized the shortlist for Book Invasion so this is my pick but there are other judges who will have a say so I will report on my channel posts whether or not this book is chosen or if one of the other ones are and then I'll follow up once we are reading the finalists that are selected by all the judging groups so I'll keep you posted there is more to come but this is personally my favorite. I was awfully biased to start that I already love this book. It was one of my favorites of last year so it was an easy pick for me. And while we're talking dark theory it's probably a great time to mention the author has requested that I give a little bit of attention to something that's coming up that I'm excited for too and there is a novella coming out in the same world as dark theory and that is called Dark Kingdom. They've allowed me to share the cover art here so insert picture and I think it's stunning. Obviously it ties in very nicely with the full-length novel. I will be honest I am someone who prefers a longer fiction but I love the world enough that I am interested to read an in-between story. It's marked as being 1.5 so it will take place after Dark Theory so I want to read that one first but before the next book is coming out which I'm really excited for and I can't wait until there is a release date for that. Now let's switch over to other books that I read that I feel are underhyped either because they're new releases or because they are other indie gems that I found and picked up on my own free time. Now the first one is a review copy and that is Descendant Machine by Gareth L. Powell and this is technically a follow-up or companion novel to a previous book I reviewed which is Stars and Bones I believe and so this one follows completely different characters. It really is a standalone, technically set in the same universe but in my mind the universe is not distinct enough that you don't have to read the books in order in order to follow the story. This one follows a woman who at the beginning of the story there's a traumatic event and her ship has to save her and then she's dealing with this later on trying to deal with the trauma of what happened. She meets up with an old lover and realizes that she needs to possibly forgive both the lover and the ship. It's a sweet story. It definitely I think appeals to those of you that really love things like Becky Chambers so it's a cozier sweeter version of our future potential world. I liked it. It was cute but as I've often said on my channel the books that really stick with me tend to be the ones that have deeper stakes and this one was so sweet and cozy that I never really worried for the characters despite what should have been a traumatizing setup to the story. Next is The Surviving Sky and this is a post-apocalyptic science fantasy story that is set in a world where there are all these storms happening and so in order to survive humanity lives above them. There is, as I mentioned, a magical element to the story so there are those that are architects that help to lift and keep the cities in the sky as they are. So we follow someone who works in this job and their spouse and together there is something that happens, something goes wrong and more is discovered. I enjoyed the story for the most part. I really like the world building and honestly I could have love to see more of it, really having it drawn out. This book is loosely compared to something like N.K. Jemsen, the Broken North Trilogy, because of that kind of post-apocalyptic, apocalyptic world. And I see those comparisons, but I do think that comparing anything to N.K. Jemsen leaves almost any other book pale. So I like this one. I thought it had nice prose. I thought the characters were complex. It was very romantically heavy, which makes sense in a story that is centered around a husband and wife. But personally, I liked it, but it just wasn't entirely what I wanted. So, uh, you know, a semi-warm recommendation from me. Next, let's talk about Tusks of Extinction by Ray Nyler. And this is a short novella that is written by the same author who wrote Mountain in the Sea, which is a story I love about octopus, or octopi rather. And so this is a story that follows a future where Moscow, where Russia specifically, has resurrected mammoths. And there is this behavioral expert who has died, but they use her consciousness and implant it into the mammoths in order to try to teach them how to be mammoths. It's a really innovative, cool concept concept and I'm someone who loves prehistoric life. I will admit the story did not quite hit the mark for me. I think it's just a very ambitious story told in a very small package. I think perhaps if it had been expanded into a full-length novel, I think I would have been more satisfied with it. So I liked it. It's definitely one I want to revisit before the end of the year. I could see it being a favorite or it should be a favorite given my love for prehistoric life. But the first time reading it here, I did find myself a little bit unsatisfied and definitely wanting more than I was able to get in this small package. I also got a copy of Resurrections by Ada Hoffman. If you don't know, she's one of my favorite science fiction authors. She wrote the Outside Trilogy, which I adore. It is weird Lovecraftian sci-fi. And after enjoying and loving, honestly, the whole trilogy, I've been saying yes to anything else I can get my hands on. This is a collection of short stories and poems, which is not normally something I review on my channel. But again, I make an exception for Ada Hoffman. If she has any other stories, send them my way. And so this was sent to me by one of her publishers. And I have to admit, I liked it a lot 
lot more than I normally like short fiction. What really surprised me is the fact that I love the poetry so much. The poetry ended up being my favorite part and I don't read and review poetry and perhaps that was part of it is that it felt very fresh, it felt very different and I love Ada Hoffman's creative mind. I find that she does things I don't see other authors do or puts together connections in ways that I don't see other authors doing and I just love it. So I would say you've got to go into this knowing what you're going to get. It is a collection of short stories and poems. Some are stronger than others. Some of them are loosely connected and otherwise they feel kind of they stand on their own but I enjoyed this one. It had some really creative moments in it and the only thing I would criticize for this book is the fact that I prefer long fiction. So I wish this was another novel by her and I will wait impatiently for that day to come. Next up, let's talk about Exordia by Scott Dickinson. And this is the same author who wrote The Trader Brew Cormant, one of my favorite fantasy series. And so if you love that series or hate that series, I will say that it should have very little bearing over whether or not you pick up this book. Had I not known it was the same author, honestly, these feel very independent. This is a science fiction thriller that follows a woman who is both the survivor of genocide and also an office worker. She has a close encounter by some kind of alien at the beginning of the story and then from there she is teamed up with a group of civilians and soldiers trying to investigate a broadcast. I'll be honest, this book was really kooky. The beginning actually really appealed to me. It's just very off-kilter, weird, different than what I normally read, which you've heard me say on my channel. I love something that is different and not just the stereotypical run-of-the-mill science fiction, and that is what you get here. However, as you go on, and I should mention this book is long, I mistakenly said in my anticipated releases that this is a novella. Despite being published by Tor.com, it's definitely a full-length novel, and I think that it could have been shorter. I just found that while I liked the beginning of it, the further it went, on, the less excited I was by the ideas, and especially with a book that kind of has a kooky, funny tone, I find that they work best when they're short because of the fact that it almost feels like having too much sweets all in one sitting, and personally I would rather have something meatier and more serious in tone if I'm going to read a novel this long. So like the beginning of it, honestly not my favorite. And again, I adore Trader Brew Cormorant, but I don't feel like this is a good comparison. If you love that and go into this looking for something similar, I don't think you're gonna get it. I also read Electric Forest by Tanith Lee, and this is a short science fiction novel that was recommended to me by my friend Whitney from Secret of Storycraft. And this is a book I went into knowing nothing about it, and it was such a delight. The basic premise is that we follow a woman who is disabled, who gets the opportunity by a scientist to go into a new body. However, in doing so, she then has to go and gets pulled into this large espionage plot. So this is a story from the basic synopsis. You probably think it's a very basic story of, again, a woman overcoming disabilities or talking about how we treat people differently based off of their perceived body and so forth. And definitely that is in the story. But at the same time, there's this incredible second layer that just adds depth to the story and adventure and excitement with this twisting around of politics and trying to maneuver around socially. It definitely gave me similar vibes to the Crucial Darts series. So if you love those and are looking for something else that kind of has that like quiet political intrigue, this one really hit that same button for me. And the ending. I don't want to oversell the ending. Whitney told me the ending was amazing and she was absolutely right. It's the kind of ending that completely made me reconsider the entire book in its whole and really elevated the book from, again, a book I was enjoying as I was reading it, but I didn't really know where it was going. And once I got there and saw what the author was doing, it was even better. So highly recommend. This, in my mind, is one of those underhyped science fiction gems that is the reason I keep going and diving into these adventures of trying to find the really good books, because when I find one like this, it is so rewarding. And I also read Opening Moves, and this is a story that is set in a future where there has been an alien invasion. We follow the story from the perspective of a college student or college student dropout who is obsessed with this new virtual reality game. And soon enough, as you imagine, there's actually more going on with the game than it seems. This book is the start of a series and it does feel like that. The ending to this book really feels unfinished in the way that it's clearly meant to be a dot 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 to be continued. So go into that knowing that the author is expecting or hoping to entice you to continue on. So overall, I really like this one. I enjoy enjoyed the virtual reality aspects to it. It definitely felt similar or reminiscent of Ready Player One, which I suspect the author was trying to pull in that crowd. And so kind of put in the same box as Ready Player One, which I consider to be a fun adventure story, but not the most earth-shattering, mind-blowing science fiction out there. So I had a good time with this one. It was kind of goofy, a little bit humorous. If I had access to the further books, I might consider continuing on, but right now I'm kind of satisfied to leave it there and just kind of sample into the series at the moment. 
And finally, I want to talk about An Excess Male, which is a near future dystopian story that is more real than fiction in a lot of ways because it is set in a world where China, as it actually did, have a one child policy. And so we follow one of those males who is living in this world where there are more males in China as adults than there are females. And so it is a slow burning, character driven story that follows not just the perspective of our main male, but also the other perspectives, getting to see what life is like in this future. I'm calling this book a dystopian specifically because of the tone of it. It is a very dark and sad and grim imagining of this future. You might think that in a future where there are less females in China that they might be better valued and treated as higher members of society, but this author really imagines the opposite and them being treated instead like pawns to be traded and bartered with. The main character is incredibly unlikable. He's just a hard character to like and spend time with and sympathize. I think what I struggle most with this story is the fact that, again, it paints just a really dark picture of humanity. So you see a future that is very homophobic to those that are gay, especially in a society where there's a lot of pressure to continue on the bloodlines and actually make sure that there are enough children going forward. And then there's also a lot of really unnecessary stigma and prejudice towards those that are atypical in terms of neurodiverseness. And just some lines within the story really rub me the wrong way. Now I understand that the author can have different opinions than their characters, but even if that is the case, I just really questioned the purpose of some of the things that they were saying. And for me, I felt like some of the things didn't need to be there and you could have told the story in a different way without having so much derogatory language passed about it. So definitely it's kind of my impression of the story, dragged it down. Other people might have different interpretations. I'd love to talk about it in the comments down below. If you've read the book and love it, I would love to hear more about your perspective. And you know, if you disagree with me, let's talk. So that's it for this video here. If I counted right, I think I had 13 underhyped books on this list. Again, Dark Theory is a little bit of a cheat because again, if you watch my channel regularly, you've already heard me gush about it several times. So I will keep you posted as the judging finishes up for the SFSPC awards and let you know who are in the final group and who wins and reigns supreme among our judges. So I'm looking forward to sharing more with you all in the new year. And once again, I kind of find myself in a bit of a reading slump. If you noticed in this video, I have more negative things to say about the books than positive. I'm definitely with the year closing up, reassessing what I'm doing in terms of my reviewing and reading habits. And I would like to change that. I am finding myself with a little bit less reading time, although everyone's going to say that's relative, right? Because people think that I read a ton but I am finding myself reading a little bit less and that's making me really want to read only the good stuff. So hopefully going forward, I'm gonna be focusing on picking out and choosing books that I'm more likely to really enjoy. But I also really enjoy doing videos like this where I share with you underhyped books that you probably haven't heard of. The downside with that is sometimes I read books that I don't really like, that I don't think are great, and sometimes they're underhyped because they're just not amazing books. And so it's always a gamble and I try to do a little bit of both things. So I try to accommodate and read for my personal enjoyment, but also hopefully giving something back of value to my audience. That all being said, if you want to stick around, subscribe. I hope you do. I do read a lot of horror, thriller, science fiction, fantasy, and other dark things. If you want to help me out with this video, you can give me a thumbs up. You can drop an emoji, even if it's just a picture of something like a spaceship or an alien. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.